It is hot and dry. The weight of a knight's armor is like an anchor. Every step he takes, he feels the muscles in his legs straining. Smoke is blowing over the battlefield and his eyes are watering, which is only made worse by the glare coming from his pristine white mantle in the glazing sun. He looks to his brothers in the Knights Templar and realizes death may be near, but he will not go down without a fight. Hello and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If you are already subscribed, welcome back. It's wonderful to see you. Today we are going to be talking about part number four of five parts of the Knights Templar. Here we are going to focus on the Battle of Hattin, the downfall of Crusader Jerusalem. So if you haven't seen parts number one, two or three yet, go ahead, watch those first. The link is in the description down below. And while you're there, you might as well give me a like, comment and subscribe. Now, let's get into this. We left off with our Knights Templar being seen as the hero of the Battle of Mont Gisard, where they managed to beat back the might of the Muslim army who were under the leadership of the once great Saladin at the walls of Jerusalem. Saladin had only escaped just with his life after fleeing on a camel, but he wasn't the slightest deterred and he was still laser focused on taking the city of Jerusalem. Ten years have passed since the crusader victory at the Battle of Mont Gassad, and Saladin had been testing the waters with a small skirmishes against Catholic forces and of course the Knights Templar. But on the 4th of July 1187, in the shadows of a pair of two extinct volcanoes on the plains of Atin, 100 miles away from Jerusalem, the 50-year-old Saladin decides the time to strike is now and it will be he who decides the fate of the ancient city of Jerusalem. Saladin has learned from his mistakes in the past, and with him is the largest army the Holy Land has ever seen. Some scholars number it at 40,000 men. Opposing them were the king of Jerusalem, a person called Guy of Lucian, and a former mercenary who helped the Crusader army at the Battle of Mont Gassard, Reynard of Chatenon. Accompanying them were 20,000 soldiers, a collection of different knightly orders and around 700 Knights Templar, who were also still considered the very most elite fighting force in all of Christendom. Now, Reynard of Chatenon and Saladin were certainly not friends. Reynard was somewhat overly aggressive and bullish. A year earlier, he had attacked a trade caravan which belonged to Saladin, and this caused the conflict to heat up between the two people. Saladin even declared a jihad, a holy war, against Reynard of Chatenon himself, vowing to his subordinates that he will kill the Christian leader himself. And now it seems he might get a chance to. At dawn, on the day of the Battle of Hattin, the 4th of July, 1187, Saladin tells his men to wake up early. He orders them to set fire to the dry shrubs that surround this dusty battlefield. The air becomes thick and intoxicated with smoke, and he tells his archers to loose a barrage of arrows in a volley. The once blazing sun is blurred out in a haze of missiles which rain down terror on the Christians, sending the mainly French crusaders into panic. The Templars try to make a charge and quickly realize that the French foot soldiers have not obeyed their commands and instead of charging, they freeze in terror or flee altogether. Before long, the entire crusader army is surrounded by Muslim forces. The Templars attempt again and again to charge through the lines, but again and again they are repulsed by Saladin's mighty army. By late afternoon, Saladin watched as Reynard of Chatenon and his closest knights form a last stand, 
Slowly but surely, a smile creeps across Saladin's face as Reynard of Chatenon's princely tent falls. The Muslim army claim victory with a number of prisoners, including Reynard of Chatenon, Guy of Lucien, the King of Jerusalem, and around 180 Knights Templar. By the evening, both Reynard of Chatenon and Guy of Lucien are summoned to Saladin's luxurious tent to learn what will happen to them. These warriors were completely exhausted from a day of battle and they were thirsty from the events. Saladin offers Guy of Lucian, the king of Jerusalem, a cup of cooled rose water to quench his thirst. Guy enjoys the water and attempts to pass the cup to Reynard of Chatenon. But Saladin raises his hand and forces him to stop. In ancient Arabic culture, if you offer a guest of food or water, you are bound to treat them with respect and you shall not harm them. Saladin stands up and says, kings should never harm a king, but Reynard of Chatenon is no king. I can imagine the entire tent fell with silence and tension as Reynard of Chatenon realizes his fate. But Saladin offers him a lifeline. Reynard of Chatenon, the Christian ruler and warlord, to live, you need to convert to Islam to become a Muslim. An offer Saladin knew that Reynard would refuse, which of course he did. Saladin drew his blade and brought it down on Reynard's neck. But instead of decapitating him, he only managed to hack off an arm and tells his subordinates to finish the deed. His head is then dragged to Damascus in a shameful embarrassment. The 180-ish captured knights were all placed on the ground outside this luxurious tent and they were all chained together. They saw the execution happen and wondered what their fate would be. Now normally they would be ransomed off because the order would pay for their release, enriching the captors. But Saladin had seen the military power of the Knights Templar firsthand and he ordered their mass decapitation. This wasn't done by skilled executioners or soldiers, but rather by Saladin's underlings, lawmakers, clerics, and accountants, who all lined up one by one to gain the bragging rights of killing a Catholic. You can imagine the mess they made as they botched execution after execution. The Grand Master of the Knights Templar, the Flemish-born Gerard de Rutford, watched his brothers be executed, and he was told he would live but only because he could go back and tell his order what he had seen. The Battle of Atin was a precursor to the downfall of Jerusalem, as three months later, on the 2nd of October, 1187, with their king, Guy of Lucian, imprisoned in Damascus, the city of Jerusalem was semi-peacefully handed over to Saladin by the Crusaders, as they realized there was no fight here. They could not win. Saladin allowed the free passage of anyone who wished to evacuate the city to show his mercy to the Catholics. After more than 80 years of Catholic rule, the city was now back in Muslim hands. The Templars were made to offer Catholic pilgrims safe passage to and from the Holy Land, the city. But now the city is lost to Muslims and with it, the real reason the Templars form is lost. So what is their new role? Well, they lost their headquarters, first of all, at the Temple Mount, where they get their name from, and they lost their role entirely. But the Templars still had their financial might, and they formed a new base in Acre, which had been conquered by crusaders from the Muslims in 1191, and became the new capital city of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, even though they no longer held Jerusalem. In the Third Crusade, Richard the Lionheart, the King of England, comes to the Holy Land, and asks the Knights Templars for their help because of their military expertise in the area. And they made real gains against the mighty Saladin and his armies. But the old city, the capital of Jerusalem, remains a bridge too far and unattainable by the Third Crusade army. For the next 100 years, the Knights Templar focus on building their financial and military supremacy in the Holy Land, even purchasing the entire island of Cyprus from Richard the Lionheart before selling it to the Kingdom of Jerusalem. However, by 1291, all that the Knights Templar had worked for over the years had started to come into a steep decline. 
Their base in Akkar came under attack from Mamluk Sultanates, from the Egyptians, the successors of Saladin, at the siege of Akkar from the 4th of April to the 18th of May 1291. The city was eventually lost to the Muslims. This not only ending the Jerusalem Kingdom, but ending the Catholic rule in the Holy Land. This meant that the Templars were forced to flee along with the royal elite to the island they once owned outright, Cyprus, where the King of Jerusalem became the King of Cyprus, Henry II. Now we know that the Templars eventually came to an end. But this was the real beginning of the end for the Templars because they had lost their role as the protectors of the Holy Land. It had been taken away from them. There was no more Catholic Holy Land. It had been taken by the Muslims. It's almost like the order had lost their entire purpose. By 1292, their new Grand Master, Jacques de Molière, who was an amazing person, he was knighted at the age of 21 and a deeply religious man, like all Templars were, started to look for a new purpose for his order. But would he find one? Well, find out what happens next in part number five, the final part of the Knights Templar series. I really do hope that you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you want to watch in the future by commenting down below. Like, comment, subscribe, the more you know.